Hi, welcome back to another video in my 5-minute mini-series, and today we're going to go over an introduction to shape keys. Shape keys are really helpful if you want to make custom expressions for your VRChat avatar, or if you want to VTube, use highly detailed tracking, or if you're just coming from something like Vroid, which doesn't have a lot of expressions built in. All of the resources that I'm using in this video will be linked in the description, so if you're interested in following along, you're absolutely encouraged to. And I'll also point out each individual resource that I use as it comes up in the video. So for the first half of this video, I'm going to go over some basic terms, vocabulary, that I'm going to be using a lot in the second half of the video, where I'm going to actually go over to Blender and talk about making shape keys and walk you through it. So what exactly is a blend shape anyway? So a blend shape, also known as a shape key, is basically a set of instructions that transforms the individual vertices on your VRChat avatar. So for example, if you're making a winking blend shape, at a weight of 0, your eye will be completely open, whereas at a weight of 1, your eye will be completely closed. A visium is a specific type of blend shape that deals with mouth movements and what shape your mouth makes when you make a sound. So VRChat uses the Oculus Developer's Visiums library, which I've linked in the description, and it has lots of different reference images which can be super helpful if you're trying to make these from scratch. So a basis shape key is the starting value shape key, the default value. So anytime you apply another shape key, it's transforming the vertices from their basis position. You do not want to mess with the basis shape key because it will mess with all of your other shape keys. However, if you accidentally move a vertices that you don't mean to move, it's very easy to revert it back to basis inside of Blender, and I'll show you how to do that. A vertex group is exactly what it sounds like. It's a group of vertices. If you still don't understand, I found that Blender's Docs actually has an excellent explanation of what a vertex group is. So they describe it as parts of a chair. So you could have a vertex group for the seat of the chair, the legs of the chair, the back of the chair, etc. I, I chose to talk about vertex groups because they can be used as a tool when creating shape keys. So for example, if I wanted to make a shape key where the character sticks their tongue out, I could quickly select the tongue by selecting the tongue vertex group. Another tool that is really helpful when we're creating shape keys is proportional editing. You can turn it on in edit mode, and you'll know it's on if it's highlighted blue like this. So proportional editing actually acts a lot like sculpt mode. This is super helpful because instead of having to move each individual vertex, you can move groups of them. And the final tool that I'm going to talk about today is using symmetry. Symmetry is exactly what it sounds like. Any change that you make on one side of the mesh will also occur on the other side of the mesh. And the most common type of symmetry we will be using is symmetry over the x-axis. Now we're going to get into the second half of the video where I actually walk you through making shape keys inside of Blender. Welcome to the second half of my video where I'm going to go over how to create your own shape keys inside of Blender. If you're interested in following along, you're welcome to use your own avatar, or you can use this amazing Vroid head edit by Droog, which I've linked in the description. All of the work that we're going to be doing today is going to take place inside of this object data properties panel. When you first click on it, you may need to open a couple of windows, notably the shape key window and maybe the vertex group window if you're using those. If you don't see the Object Data Properties panel, it might be because your mesh isn't selected. So select that and it should appear. So inside of the Object Data Properties panel, we're going to click on the plus and it's automatically going to create a basis shape key for us. If your model already has shape keys, it already has a basis shape key, so you don't need to worry about creating another one. Under any circumstance, do not edit or touch the basis shape key. Leave it alone. If we click the plus again, we can create our first actual shape key. When you double click on your shape key to give it a name, keep in mind that some shape keys need to be named very specifically. So for example, VRChat Visiums all have specific names which you can find in the VRChat documentation. Since this is just a demonstration, I'm just going to name it whatever I feel like. So now I'm going to select the shape key that I want to edit and tab into edit mode. Inside of edit mode, I'm going to change a couple of settings before I actually start working on the shape key. First of all, I want symmetry on the x-axis to be on, so any change I make to the right side will also happen to the left side. Additionally, I want to turn on proportional editing. Whether you like to work with connected only on or off depends on the shape key that you're working on. It can be very helpful if you're working with the mouth because you can move the top lip and the bottom lip separately. So here's an example of what it looks like if I move something with connected on checked. However, if connected on is unchecked, it might move like this. Any changes that I make to the position of the vertices right now will be reflected in our final shape key. So for now, I'm going to create what I want our shape key to look like.
Keep in mind you may need to move the inside of the mouth and the outside of the mouth separately. This is where vertex groups come in. If I hit L to select all vertices that are connected to each other, I can create a new vertex group by clicking the plus over here. Then I have to assign all of the selected vertices to the vertex group. I'm also going to name this mouth inside. That way, if I accidentally deselect the inside of the mouth, I can come over here to vertex groups, click on select, and it will select it for me. If your proportional editing is affecting too much area or not enough, you can use the scroll wheel to adjust the size of the area that you're affecting. Normally you would want to spend a lot more time on your shape keys than I did, but since this is just for a demonstration, I'm going to call this good. If we tab out of edit mode, we can preview what our shape key looks like by adjusting this slider. If we adjust this number right here, it will change the weight of the selected shape key. The weight basically just means how much does this shape key affect the mesh right now. If I increase this value, our shape key will become more and more visible. So there we go, that's what it looks like for now. I also want to talk about how to fix a vertex if you accidentally move it into the wrong position. I'm going to hit Z to enter wireframe mode and then select all of the vertices that were accidentally moved. Then if you hit F3 on your keyboard, you can open a search menu where you can search for menus, shortcuts, and tools. The operation we want to find is called blend from shape. A window will appear where you can tell vertices to go to a position based on any of your shape keys. To send them back to their original position, select Basis and uncheck Add. Now the vertices are right back where we want them to be. Finally, I'm going to talk about mirroring shape keys from the left side to the right side so you don't have to redo everything for each side individually. For this demonstration, I'm going to be making an eyebrow raise shape key. So just like before, click on the plus to create a new shape key. And now I'm going to once again create my shape key inside of edit mode. All right, now that we've created a shape key for the right eyebrow raise, let's mirror it for the left eyebrow raise. Back in object mode, set the weight of your eyebrow raise all the way to one. Now we're gonna click on the drop down on the right and select new shape from mix. Since our new shape key is functionally a duplicate of our old shape key, I'm going to turn off the old shape key and on the new one. Now I'm gonna go back into the drop down and click on mirror shape key. Now we have a shape key on our left side that's identical to the one on our right side. We can also use new shape from mix to make one shape key that controls both of our eyebrows. So that's gonna be all for today's tutorial. I really hope that you had the opportunity to learn something new and you enjoyed it just as much as I did making it. If you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, please, I encourage you to leave a comment, and hey, if you wanna see more, why not subscribe? Until next time, signing off.